Comic-Con, the Mecca of Geekdom. Once again, I've made the pilgrimage to the sacred land of downtown San Diego for the greatest pop culture convention in the world. This time I decided to switch up my usual Comic-Con routine and dedicate the bulk of my time to either sitting in the hollowed Hall H or waiting in line to get into Hall H. Yes, I did mean actually camping out overnight for most of the convention, but it was totally worth it. The very first panel for this year's Hall H was a vague one called Open Road. Going into the hall on Thursday, nobody knew what the panel was supposed to be about. Then Bill freaking Murray shows up out of nowhere for his first ever appearance at Comic-Con to promote Rock the Kibosh, a new movie about a talent manager stuck in Afghanistan. Murray then proceeded to spend the next hour being completely awesome, leaving a tough act for the next panel to follow. Once upon a time, I did save the city of New York. And I had the coolest damn car to drive around Manhattan. Fortunately, that panel was the Hunger Games and they were up for the challenge. Along with a great performance and a sneak peek at the movie's first trailer, the panel featured the ever-adorable Jennifer Lawrence just being Jennifer Lawrence. Um, well, uh, I, suddenly I can't remember this whole you, what about when you volunteer for your life? sister? After The Hunger Games, it was time for somebody to call a doctor. Peter Capaldi and Jenna Coleman were on call to talk about the doctor and the kind of person they think his 12th incarnation is. So he's a constantly growing character. I think he, he's, he is not a soldier, he's a, he's a good guy, he'd rather that there was uh, no violence, he'd rather that there was peace, he'd rather sit in the car park at night looking at the stars, you know, than have to go out and blow up Daleks. <laughs> I like blowing up Daleks. Uh, and I think he enjoys it as well once he gets going. Interestingly enough, Capaldi and Coleman were joined by Michelle Gomez, who played the Master last season and will apparently be returning next season for more villainous plots. Sadly, I had to bail out of Hall H after the Doctor Who panel and wouldn't return until Saturday after spending virtually all of Friday in line. Not that you can't enjoy Comic-Con from a line. On Friday evening, Lucasfilm surprised everybody by bringing the entirety of Hall H out for a Star Wars concert, which I had a pretty good view of. And although the concert was great, you couldn't help but feel a little bad for Kevin Smith, who had to play to a nearly empty room following the Star Wars panel. 
The concert wasn't the only excitement for the evening either. At some point in the middle of the night, Zack Snyder gave the crowd a thrill by personally driving around the convention center in a particularly famous car. Of course, in typical Zack Snyder fashion, while he may have good intentions, he couldn't help but screw things up for the fans. Because the Batmobile isn't exactly street legal, Snyder had to park it out on the convention center grounds, which happened to be the exact spot they were moving the overnight line to. In other words, Snyder's little stunt was literally the difference between me sleeping on the soft grass under a tent and sleeping on the cold pavement next to the water. Of course, while I may have had it rough, at least I wasn't trapped on the now infamous Hall H Island. With wristband distribution going painfully slow, the restless folks at the back of the Hall H line started to descend into madness. Fortunately, the surviving islanders were able to be successfully reintegrated into society just in time for Hall H to open on Saturday. And what a Saturday it was! Warner Brothers started off strong with trailers for Pan and The Man from U.N.C.L.E., but it was their DC adaptations that really impressed. They gave a rundown of their upcoming movies, and though most of it was already known, there was one interesting bit of news. The 2020 Green Lantern film is actually going to be titled Green Lantern Corps, so odds are good that the story won't be Earth-based. But back to closer releases, Hall H got a first look at the Suicide Squad trailer and it was pretty impressive, particularly Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. The trailer also featured a first look at Jared Leto's Joker and, well, see for yourself, because Warner Brothers has already released the trailer. Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you. Really, really bad. Of course, that was all a warm up for the big show Batman v Superman. And that trailer, oh boy. It's hard to say whether or not the movie will be good, but at the very least, it'll be good to look at, and I think we can all stop worrying about Batfleck. Sure, you know, and he said, I have this vision, I have this idea for the guy, and you're perfect for him. I said, well, what, what do you mean? He's like, at the end of his rope, he's older, he's like a burnout. <laughs> After the Warner Brothers panel, it was time for a double dose of Matt Smith and Zombies. First with the panel for Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, followed immediately by another film, Patient Zero, both of which look fun in their own way. The ever-animated Quentin Tarantino took to the stage next to show off his new film, The Hateful Eight, a movie about eight western archetypes trapped in a cabin during a blizzard. Ever the film historian, Tarantino shot The Hateful Eight in 70mm using literally the same lenses used to film classics like Ben-Hur. Moving on to legendary pictures, Guillermo del Toro is still apparently making Crimson Peak, a movie he showed off last year. At least he's sticking with this one to the end. More importantly, convention goers got a great first look at Duncan Jones' Warcraft movie, and it looks really amazing. We wanted to make a film which, which everyone would be interested in beyond just the Warcraft audience, the Warcraft gaming audience. And I think it was a, a similar challenge that Peter Jackson had when he did the first Lord of the Rings movies, is, you know, how do you appeal to an audience who hasn't read Tolkien? He managed to make that work, we're hoping we can do the same. The extended preview showed Gul'dan using the souls of thousands of Draenei slaves and prisoners to open up the dark portal so that the orcs can escape their dying world. Representing the Horde side of the story is Duratan, who will walk the line between saving his people and turning them into monsters. Following the legendary panel was Entertainment Weekly's Kick-Ass Women, and between Gal Gadot and Gwendolyn Christie, they certainly delivered. 
And appropriately enough, the Kick-Ass Woman panel was followed by the master of Kick-Ass Woman, Joss Whedon, who I actually ran into on Thursday night while on a search for pizza. Presented by Dark Horse Comics, Whedon's hour-long panel is generally held in Ballroom 20, but this year for the first time they've moved him into Hall H. Um, I asked for the big room. <laughs> I'm a little angry. At the panel, Whedon announced his new comic, Twist, which he described as, What if Batman was a woman in Victorian London? He also answered questions about the Avengers, Firefly, and the meaning of life. The world is a random and meaningless, terrifying place, and we all, spoiler alert, die. <laughs> um, we are designed to... Most critters are just designed not to know that. We are designed uniquely to transcend that, to understand that Oh, I can quote myself. This is fun. A thing isn't beautiful because it lasts. Finally, Saturday ended with the Fox panel, and this is the panel that won Comic-Con. The panel kicked off with the trailer for Victor Frankenstein starring James McAvoy and Daniel Radcliffe, and if you like the scenes in The Avengers where Tony Stark convinces Bruce Banner to do recklessly foolish science experiments, this movie is basically entirely about that. And then as we embark on this journey together, he starts losing his goddamn mind. I am like trying to like pull him back from the edge of insanity. Next up was the Fantastic Four, and yeah, they were there. Now bring on Deadpool. With the trailer so nice they showed it twice, Deadpool is truly happening in all its R-rated glory. Hugh Jackman was up next to present a history of the X-Men movies, which included X-Men, X2, First Class, and Days of Future Past. Yes, even Fox is actively denying the existence of X-Men 3 in the first Wolverine movie. All of this eventually led up to bringing out the cast of X-Men Apocalypse, and while a proper trailer wasn't ready, they did show off a rough cut of some of the footage they have. And don't worry about that whole Ivan Ooze thing going around. I don't know what's going on in that photo, but Apocalypse was definitely blue in the footage. The panel concluded with the most uncanny photo in history as Stanley showed up to take a picture with the casts of X-Men, Deadpool, and the Fantastic Four. Of course, since Stanley wanted to be in the photo too, Gambit's Channing Tatum showed up to take the photo for him. Now that's the way to end a panel! And that was my Hall H experience at Comic-Con. Of course, that's not to say I didn't hit the exhibit floor at all. There was plenty of cool stuff to see on the floor, some of which you could actually buy. My own loot haul wasn't too big this year, but I did manage to snag a White Mage Chocobo plush from Final Fantasy and a Crimson Whelp plush from the World of Warcraft. I also snagged a free copy of Star Wars Tarkin, so I guess I'll get to learn about the life of the man who killed Alderaan. Elsewhere on the floor, I got to play some Mario Maker, and it really is something. The physics of each game are intact, so you can create a level and then play it in whichever style you like. I also ran into a slightly more successful YouTuber than myself and got to see him work up close. I'm not entirely sure how Tabuscus manages to maintain that energy level all the time, but it is something to see. And speaking of something to see, of course it wouldn't be Comic-Con without all sorts of cosplay.
So that was my Comic-Con 2015 experience. Were you at Comic-Con or would you like to go? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe, pass this video around to your friends, and I'll do this all again next year. Some of the best parties I've ever been to were with really insane nerds. Like crazy. <laughs> that I think, um, and it's something that I act... <laughs>